hello welcome back to our channel so for today's video i'm going to be doing a challenge so i'm going to be doing infrared portrait photography it's going to be my first time doing that so i can't wait i'm really excited So for this special portrait photo shoot, I'm going to be using our Sony a7 II, which is converted to full spectrum, which means that the hot filter has been removed. And as for the lenses, I have here the Samyang 85mm f1.4 Mark II, and I also have the 35mm f1.4 Mark II. So these two lenses were released this year. We've got reviews of them. I'm going to link it down on the description box if you not, if you want to have to take a look. Um, I'm going to be using these two because when we did the review, well, Peter found out that they're really good for infrared photography because he said that it doesn't have the, the hot stuff. Hot spot. spot. Right, the hot spot. You can cut. You're going to cut that. So to do infrared photography, I'm also going to be using special filters for them. So I have three filters here in front of me, as you can see. So the first one is the 680 nanometer. This is what he called the super blue. But if you look for it, it's red. Maybe it's colorblind. I don't know. Can't wait to see what it looks. And the second one is the 7760. So this one, he said that has the infrared tonality, but still shows a bit of color. Okay. If I look through my light visual light, it's literally black. Okay. So yeah, I'll put it there. And the next one is the 850, which is pure infrared. Um, technically, this is pure blood. There are no other mixes in this one. This is pure, pure infrared, whatever that means. So when you're doing infrared photography, I've been told, he told me, that every time you use each filter, you have to correct a white balance on the camera itself because since it's infrared light, the application will have a hard time correcting the white balance. So for example, if I'm gonna be using the 680, then I'll have to correct the white balance on the camera and so on and so forth. So after I've introduced you to all of these things I'm gonna be using for this shoot, let's go ahead and meet our model. I can't wait to start and I, I just don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna expect. I think it's gonna be really cool. Right now I'm here with my model, her name is Folly and she's going to help me out for today's photo issue which is going to be infrared. So first I'm going to be using the Samyang 85mm f1.4 Mark II and I, I'm, I'm using it with my Sony a7 II which is converted to full spectrum and the first filter I'm going to be using is the 760. I'm doing this infrared photo issue because Peter said I suck at it so I'm going to have to prove a point that I yeah, don't. <laughs> So let's start and do that one. Let's go. Because I hate the focusing on this one because it's A7 II. I don't know how I survived with this one. I'm so spoiled with A7 IVs. Oh look, she's having, she's feeling it now. Okay, stay like that. Oh my God, I hate the focusing on this one. I will do a close-up shot, so I'm gonna go closer to her. Can you um, look directly to the camera? Oh goodness me. Look, someone forgot the stuff of ring. So look what I'm doing. Jeez. Oh, I no need to name call him, shame him. I know, you need to be internet shamed. Look at this guy. It's Kyle! <laughs> what? <laughs> So I wanted to shoot by the water but it started raining heavily so we have to move here within the trees to protect our gear so now i have the 850 with me and it's really cool because because she has um hazel color her eyes are brown and with this one they look really light which is so cool it looks like she's a vampire for some reason that's a compliment she looks like a really cool vampire on it and with the forest as well, all together, it really suits the feeling of that. Your girlfriend is so hot. Sorry. I know you're listening to us. Not Pete's girlfriend. She's alright, like, it's okay. 
Can we see some chewing for Red, by the way? <laughs> oh my god, you can see! She's warm! You see, she's got a cold nose, looks like a cat. I can see her inside garment. Is that like the nice way of saying it? I can see it. Oh, she looks so pretty. I love it. Her eyes are so light as well. She looks like she has gray eyes. But she's so cool. She, oh, I love these pictures. Oh, it looks so ethereal and mystical and amazing. I don't know why. And her skin is so smooth in this. Is that normal? Your skin really looks smooth in... Like in infrared. Yeah, it looks like wax. Actually, yeah, that's the worth it. So amazing. It means I don't need to spend so much time on skin. I didn't, not like I need it on her, but you know what I'm saying. So cool. I'm going to move closer to focus on her eyes because the eyes look like, uh, like creepy, but a good creepy, you know. I actually quite like 850 because it has this nice mystical feeling to it. And as I've said, the skin looks like wax. It's very, very smooth. So makes it easy for editing. I actually can't wait to go home and edit these photos right now, but I'm sure you can see it already because we're showing the before and after. So what I'm using now is the 680 and it's my favorite one because this is what they call the super blue and it's making the vegetation a bit blue tone and I love it so much. It looks so cool. That's why I'm using a 35 millimeter so you can really see the surrounding. I can't actually believe this is so cool. I can't believe I'm not shooting infrared before because this is so basic. Oh my god, it's so cool. It's like shooting in a candy fairyland. I don't even know how to explain it. It's so cool. Everything is like blue and she's blue as well, her is purple. Yeah, that's about it. Yep. Got pictures. I love it! I love 680! It's my favorite, I'm gonna keep using it, but... Maybe for special circumstances, circumstances, I can't even pronounce that word. Okay, how do I get up from here? You wanna see the photos real quick? I'm shooting this cute, cute couple that I happen to find here in the forest. <laughs> One, two, three. Can you touch noses then? Touch noses. Yes, there we go. I ate something too. It's really ruining it for me. Let it go, let it go. Just pretend that you're an avatar, yeah? A, yeah. Uh, unbranded beverage. <laughs> yeah, can you put it next to your face? <laughs> Just so you guys see how it is. Like it uh, uh, it looks like a clear water, the Coca Cola. Can you like oh, you let let, let it stand yeah. on your shoulder? Let it stand on your shoulder. Just hold it like this. Oh, fucking pet rat. Okay. <laughs> Let's let it stand. Let it stand. Let it stand. Not... Just in case the viewers at home haven't had their Coca Cola before, <laughs> you cannot see through it. We're wearing sunglasses or not? It's, uh, no, you can't. It is truly <laughs> opaque. I never realised how. It looks. <laughs> he looks so weird on the camera. No, I mean like, uh, not you look. No, so not you look. Like a telescope. Now we wrapped up our infrared photo shoot. First of all, there is something different. I've never shot with this. This is the very first time I've shot in infrared. And what I can say is something really cool and special. I think you guys should try it as well. And I'm really excited to go home and show you guys how to edit them. All right, guys, now I am home and I've had the chance to look at the photos I've taken during the infrared photo shoot. First of all, it was so much fun to do that because it was just the results are just out of this world. It's kind of strange to look through the viewfinder and see something so different and the outcome are so cool to look at. Really, really cool. And I was using the A7 II, which is kind of limiting. I, I know for sure that I have been spoiled with the A7 IV and A7 III's autofocus system. But this one is just, uh, but still okay, you know? All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to edit the photo. So first I'm gonna start with the 
680 and to show you that I'm gonna be using my Atomos Ninja V to record my screen first I'm gonna start with 680 nanometer and this is what they call the super blue but as you can see it is not super blue at the moment the Y balance is way off I'm using exposure x6 and this application is adding its own processing on this that is why it is very important that you set your white balance on the camera before you shut the image because if I edit this in affinity it will show the white balance i've set in a72 because if you look here on the temperature is the this lies all the way on the left side and it's just it's just crazy so i'm going to show you how it looks when i open it now i've opened the image and you can see that this is the white balance i have set on the sony a72 so in here you just have to edit the way you would do with most of your images so i would play with black points and white point as well basically expose it correctly it's probably good and add a little bit of clarity and probably detail refinement as well there's no correct number for this it's really your preference but the one thing is you don't edit the white balance in here because let me show you what happens bam it looks like something out of a candle land it's so pink okay so you are going to be editing the white balance after you have developed this one so I'm happy with this one all over, so I'm gonna press develop. And here we are going to fix the white balance. Since this is in infrared color, it is really difficult to, to rely on the application to fix the white balance. So you really have to rely on your own eyes for this. So now I'm gonna find, I'm gonna click the white balance tool and fix it a bit, make it a little bit more blue. So how do you know that you're on correct white balance? So this is a trick that you can do. So what you can do is open a black and white tool. Obviously in black and white, it removes all the color and this is gonna be a good base for you to check that your white balance is correct. So I'm gonna go under skin, right? So if I remove the black and white um, layer, then it shows that. So what you have to base it on is that the skin should be very close to the black and white color. So this is with the black and white layer. So if I remove it, you can see that the mid-tones on the skin is very close to it. So that's how I know that it's correct. Let me switch off the white balance adjustment from the original. So you can see it's way off. It is quite warm than how it should be. All right, now I'm gonna remove this thing. That's just basically what you have to worry about. So now let me process this all the way to finish. Now I've finished processing this image. I really love it. It looks like Windsor Wonderland kind of color. It's blue. I added a little bit more blue in here to add to that effect. It looks really nice aesthetically. So 680 is also good for the golden infrared, which is a channel swap. It's basically swapping the blue and the red. So let me show you that. It's this one right here. <gasps> it is so cool with this one. Now I'm confused which one I like. Okay, so basically on the red, you put the red on 0% and the blue 100% and on the blue, the red is at 100%, hence the name channel swap. But it is completely on your own preference. But for this one, I like it blue. The next one I'm going to show you is the 760 nanometer. So I'm going to choose this particular image here because I really like it. And again, the Y balance is off the same reason. This application is adding its own processing and I have set the correct white balance on A72 before I shut this. So just to remind. So this is the image with the correct white balance. Well, not really the correct white balance with the white balance I've set on the camera itself. So I'm going to do the same way. I'm going to be playing with the black point and the brightness as well, just to correct the exposure a little bit. The thing is, it's a bit underexposed because I don't want the sky to be so overexposed. So I'm exposing for this sky. So to fix the white balance on this is the same way as we did on the first one. So we're going to click the white balance first. Oh, no, that's, that's not the one. White balance, set it up here. So to see if you're on the correct white balance, we're gonna do the same trick, which is using the black and white. So that is basically the perfect white balance for it. So I'm gonna remove the black and white layer now, because I don't need it. 
So what I like the most with editing infrared portrait is that the skin is so perfect. It looks like wax, so it looks like you've used frequency separation on this already and very, very perfectly. The skin blemishes are not there. It's just, I love it so much. Okay, so now I'm gonna process this image to show you the end result. Now I've finished processing the image and as you can see 760 has very solid colors and has the full infrared tonality and it is also good to convert to black and white and let me quickly show you that. I love the contrast of it, the skin tone, the hair especially is really nice but if you want to have a full infrared it's going to be the 850. Now let's go ahead and view the portraits using the 850 nanometer, which is the pure infrared. And take a look at that. It's so cool, it's so weird. Weird in a really, really cool, amazing way. And there's one thing with infrared photography is that you can sometimes see what's inside the clothes. So right here, her, her bra is, is visible. I mean, she's wearing a, a dark top in person and you can't see that obviously but with infrared it's showing but it's so cool look at the effect of that I can't contain myself it looks like a pencil drawing really as i look more on it and especially i'm using an 85 millimeter and the bokeh is just so nice and it works really well for this and for this one i'm going to be processing this one because it's focusing more on her eyes and take a look at those eyes they look so intense and you can already see here i'm on iso 1000 it's because at 850 the sensor is not as sensitive so that's why it's noisy but it's not something that you can't fix on post process you can denoise it if you want so let me edit this one open it now we open it in affinity photo i'm gonna be doing the same thing which is playing with black points and white points and just basically correct the exposure the way we want to add a little bit more clarity or do you just lower it like that. There's no correct number for it. I keep saying that, but there's no correct number for it. And of course, you don't correct the white balance here again because it turns to super blue, super extremely blue. Okay, I'm gonna develop it. So with 850, because it's pure infrared, you don't need to worry about its white balance because it's monochromatic. So you can basically start editing it from here now on. I love infrared because of the it's making the skin look like wax, so I don't have to work so much in skin editing because normally if you shot a close-up photo like this, you have to like go and do frequency separation, all that things. But with this one, you don't need to actually do that because the skin is just perfect and I love all the detailings on it. Oh my god, it looks like a pencil drawing. All right, now I'm gonna process this image real quick. You don't need to do a lot of this because it's already nice on its own, as you can see. Now I've finished processing the 850 nanometer, and as you can see, I, I did just do the Dutch and burn and fix the exposure of it. So this is the first one, and this is the final edit. And what I love, about this the most is the eyes so this is how our eyes look like in infrared it's kind of creepy really really cool in a way so in person Polly has i think she has brown hazel eyes i don't really notice that because i'm shooting in infrared and i can't really see color through the viewfinder but her eyes is so intense it is really cool and i did some um dungeon burn in her hair to add that effect on it and a little bit on her lips to pop that out more and I've also denoised this image because I've said it was a little bit noisy because it was on ISO 1000 and I just love the entire look of it it looks like a pencil drawing and because I'm using an 85 millimeter the bokeh just works well with everything I just love it but as you can see this is kind of like a specialty photography this is not something that you would always use well if you like to do that then it's up to you but this is more for like special circumstances if you if you want to explore your artistic artistic um photography side of yourself you can definitely do this so which one do you guys like the most do you like the 680 i've said i like the 680 super blue and the 760 or the 50 which one do you like I, i'm quite confused between 850 and 760. 
to be honest. Now I've finished the body shoot, I think I did pretty well. You be the judge, you let me know in the comments below. First of all, since it was my first time, it was really fun. I mean, kind of strange in a way. I've seen Peter shoot a lot of infrared. He does infrared landscapes and I didn't quite understand why he loves doing infrared because when you look at an infrared photos, the color is just weird. I mean, if you even call that color, right? It's not the normal photo you would normally see. So now that I've experienced it for myself, it's very fun and the outcome is just out of this world and let me tell you guys sony a72 is the very first camera i've shot with this is the very first one i've started photography when i did light battle photography and newborn photos this is the very camera and i just know that i am now spoiled with sony a7r3 and the sony a74 which i'm using right now in filming their autofocus system is really good with this one is quite challenging the autofocus on this one is just i mean it's not as great as the what we have now but it's still usable if you're interested in infrared photography, we are going to be doing an infrared tutorial using both modified and unmodified cameras. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. And by the way, a huge thanks to Kyle for letting me borrow his girlfriend for... Okay, that sounds really wrong. A huge thanks to Kyle for letting me shoot his girlfriend. So huge thanks to Kyle for letting me take photos of his girlfriend Polly for this video. I don't sound creepy anymore. So I've linked their Instagram account on the description box. Kyle is a really good photographer here in Liverpool and Polly is a great model. So best check them out and give them a follow. I don't know what to say. It's amazing. I shouldn't say it like that. Let me say it again. Converted to full spectrum. So the hot sheet has been removed. And for the hot sheet, is it not? So the hot filter has been removed. I don't know what whatever that means so I, <laughs> so stupid I shouldn't say that I really don't know I'm gonna be using our Sony a72 which is full press full spec spectrum spectrum converted to full spectrum I'm gonna be using a Sony a7 so a Sony a our Sony how stupid are you good I smell okay if you're in oh I did the click on my mouth I hate that so much I'm gonna eat cake if I do this right. I will reward myself. Okay, I'm ready. You tell me on the comments below. And um, um, yeah, bye. So let us know in the comments below which wavelength is your favorite. For me personally, it's the 680 because it looks super cool. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a like, and share this video. We'll see you guys on our next one. Bye bye. I didn't like it.